What's up, YouTube? It's Zapdos TCG here, and we're back. That's right, real life Pokemon tournaments are completely back. I'm actually heading to Liverpool right now, and I still don't know what to play, so it's gonna be uh, a last day testing. You know how it goes. Hopefully, you guys are having a fantastic blast. We're here at the airport. As you can hear already, uh, the airplanes are uh, actually departing. Uh, from the airport and we're actually gonna be taking the next plane to Liverpool I'm gonna be giving you a status update which deck I'm gonna be playing We're gonna be vlogging the entire event and it's gonna be fantastic So if you guys are appreciating the content that I'm putting out be sure to let me know by rocking the hell out of the like button And let's get this adventure started This video is sponsored by PotownStore.com, the best place to get yourself some TCG code cards. They are compatible with TCG Live as well, and they literally have everything. Use the coupon code ZABDOSTCG for 5% off on everything on the website. This video is also sponsored by CardsMarket.com. This is a European platform where you're able to buy and sell cards to people all across Europe. I personally use it every single day, and you can use the referral name ZABDOSTCG when creating an account. Also, this video is sponsored by YourPlayMat.com, the best website to create your own unique custom playmat from scratch. They ship worldwide and you can get 10% off by clicking the link down below. How cool is that? Last but not least, this video is sponsored by DragonShield.com, the best website to, of course, buy accessories. They have sleeves, they have binders, they literally have everything to you, you want to start playing competitively. Or, com uh, yeah, if you're a collector, you can also get some fresh-looking uh, clear-fit sleeves. They have everything. Check the link down below, uh, of course, the affiliate link, and you're going to be helping out the channel so much thanks for sticking around with the commercials and i'll see you guys shortly peace Okay, so what's the play? Uh, I have no idea. Gengar VMAX. No idea. Total. To Mew or not to Mew? That's the question. Going on the plane, thinking about Malamar. Uh, there's also Arceus. There's darkness stuff like Gengar. I just know. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. A very very nice flight I actually play tested and I had three tables so there was nobody sitting next to me uh, which was interesting uh, because uh, I was able to play test a little bit on those tables Mew versus Gengar very hard Bad to the peak Marnie seems to be broken and I still have no idea what I will be playing but uh, you'll figure it out in the rest of this video Okay, so we have arrived in Liverpool. It is a very busy city and uh, we actually uh, got to take the other train. Hi, guys. Hi everybody. Hi. <laughs> so uh, we had to take another train because the, uh, the first one was cancelled and uh, yeah, that meant we had to wait one hour at the train station. Uh, we played that a little bit and uh, maybe I am going to be playing Gengar VMAX because the matchup spread looks very good on paper. I just hope I don't break. If I test more, uh, the late night testing will, of course, conclude what I'm going to be playing. So, we made it in the hotel room. This is looking 
pretty fancy, I would say. So, uh, yeah, quite a nice shower. Uh, we're gonna have a good night rest here, and uh, we will be ready for the tournament. I'm, I'm very excited. After two years! Okay, after playtesting for uh, more than four hours, I came to the conclusion that Gengar can actually break quite a little bit. So I actually went to my other idea that I was working on and that was Mew V Max with Pumpkaboo and a Luminion V and three Meloetta. So the theory behind this deck, it's also running a lot of ropes, is that you just uh, go second and just try to <laughs> cheese out some games. You also have Pumpkaboo to protect yourself against uh, stuff like Pat to the Peak and uh, we're gonna see how it goes. We're just gonna try and have fun. We already have our world's invite secured. So this is gonna be uh, purely uh, seeing a lot of uh, familiar faces, friends, all together, enjoying the best hobby in the world. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see some of you guys there. Okay, good morning. It is tournament day today and we will we'll be playing Mew v Max with a twist. So Pumpkaboo will hopefully save the day. If I start with Pumpkaboo, I will eat up the Pumpkaboo card, I promise. <laughs> but we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, I expect about like 300 to 400 masters. We will see how many there are. I think somebody told me that there's uh, not a lot of seniors, so I think there's maybe a possibility of being uh, yeah around 400 players. Let's just hope. We'll see how, uh, what the amount will be, and uh, we'll see how many rounds there are. You're gonna be uh, yeah getting all the information right here. First of all, breakfast. Okay, so it's a beautiful day and we are walking to the venue right now. There's even a Ferris wheel right in the corner. So this is quite an impressive uh, scenery. If you look at everything, there's like, yeah, lots of culture going around here. This is the Albert Dock and uh, we're walking to the venue right now. I'm very excited. I'm playing Movie Max with Le Mignon, Le Mignon, whatever you want to call the little fish fella. I just hope I don't start with it, but it actually secures an Alessa Sparkle turn one way easier than any other uh, Mew variant. So we're going to be trying to uh, cheese out opponents, dunk them and uh, be done with it. If we don't, we're going to be uh, not utilizing Le Mignon. Although Le Mignon late game for boss is also an option, definitely against Mew V Max because Genesect is a, a liability regardless on the bench. So I don't even care if uh, Le Mignon uh, yeah, uh, reduces your draw power to only five. It is just securing the supporter. That's gonna be most important. And also, Pumpkaboo is in the list to just, of course, make sure that Pat to the Peak does not ruin our game strategy.
So, Carl, what are you going to play today? Uh, Arcus uh, Bird Box. How many games have you played with that specific deck? I think it's going to be around, I think, 200, something like that. 200, okay. You're feeling comfortable going into this uh, meta? Uh, honestly, it took a while for me to like uh, get a hold of the deck and how it works. I, I find it difficult. But after uh, testing a considerable amount, I think, I think I'm comfortable. Yes. Okay, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you, sir. So, Flo, you uh, managed to get a spectator ticket, which yeah. was sold out in 27 seconds, I've heard. Yes. You were not able to, of course, uh, enter in the tournament. Are you going to have fun this weekend in the side events? I will try, I will try. Um, we will manage to, to try all the side events, even pick a pack. Pick a pack, pick of a course. Pack. And uh, we will try to have fun. Yeah, so that's the most important see. factor of, of course, a regional tournament. Even though uh, the tickets were sold out very quickly, you're gonna have you're seeing a lot of friends, and you're gonna have a fantastic weekend. Yeah, so, that's true. Uh, it's an adventure. So, Lawrence, you are playing Jolteon V Max. People yeah. say that it's underrated right now, but how do you feel about Manaphy? Do you think they're gonna be in the decks? I don't think they're gonna be adding Manaphy's in the decks. So, I will be fine. You will be fine? I guess Malamar. And how many games have you played with Jolteon VMAX so far? Uh, around 150, 180. Yeah, and what do you think is the difficult, the most difficult matchup for Jolteon? Rapid Strike Urshifu. Rapid Strike Urshifu, oh. okay. I, I hope you don't see any of that I today. Don't, I hope it as well. Okay, good luck. I don't go to see anyone. So, Yoni, you are playing... This beautiful card. <laughs> Just to protect those two. Okay, Malabar Chicho. Malabar VIP Pass. Are you uh, more comfortable with Chinchino than the Italian engine? Yeah, I just keep on drawing cards. Just a uh, quick math and uh, then we got to yeah, go. Yeah, I've seen that there are not a lot of collapsed stadiums uh, around. So uh, you will be able to fill your entire bench. Uh, how do you feel about Chinchino and uh, the way you uh, always need to rely on Cynthia? I don't know. Uh, Chinchino gives you two cards. Always nice. Maybe just throw basic away, get it back with Rod or with the Rescue Carrier. Okay. So you got the extra cards. Cool. And the most difficult matchup for Melamar is? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking every snipe deck. Every snipe deck. If they boss the Menifee, I'll, 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 I don't know, I'll be screwed. <laughs> yeah, depends on if you find your rescue carriers. I wish you yeah. the best of luck. Yeah, thanks. Okay, Yari, long time no see. Yes, uh, sure, how do you sure. feel today? Feeling very confident in my pick today. Yes, and you're playing? Mew. Mew VMAX. Yes. So uh, right now I'm actually interviewing all the Belgian fellas to see if we have a shot at day two. Hopefully our oh, Belgian flag will be in top eight. Uh, what is uh, your most favorable matchup with Mew VMAX? I think my most favorable matchup is just the Arches boxes without Dark. Yep. I without like dark. the matchup. Not not the Italian build with a lot of pad, that's a little yeah, yeah, freaky, yeah. but the, the builds without the pad. Nice. Yeah, I, I see they're all playing training court and uh, the one prize in Moltres. You can definitely play around that with Mew. And uh, what is your strategy for that matchup? Well, if you want to play around that, um, mostly they will discard it in the early game yes. and they will get it out with Clara in the late game. But if you're echoing Hornet onto their bench, they need to manual attach on that Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. So in that way, you just win the matchup. If they play two, it's a little bit freaky. But if you can take the only one in the discard yes. on the winning turn, you win the game. Okay, and the most difficult matchup? The most difficult matchup is Gengar Pad, but it's manageable if you manage to get 2-2-2 two, two, two KO or manage to get or if you can try and play in any way, yeah. but you just need to bump the stadium every time or you lose. Okay, I wish you the best of luck. Okay, round one is done. I was up against an Ice Rider uh, Arceus deck with Anthony. He was a very friendly person to be playing against. Uh, can you tell me a little bit how the matches got, went? Uh, so for the first round, uh, sadly, we, we saw a dunk from uh, uh, the first round with you. Uh, he couldn't find any way to basically find anything past the path of the peak. Yeah. Second round was actually was a proper match. We lasted a good long while with that one. I was really pleased with that. Yeah. By the third round, uh, uh, I got dumped. I couldn't find anything, uh, any way to get to uh, any pop, uh, uh, ultra ball, quick ball, or. Supporter. Yeah, and there's the first time I actually dunked a 350 HP V Max Pokemon. <laughs> so you had 350 HP with Ice Rider, <laughs> and because of Melodis Echo and the four fusion energies and like triple big uh, power tablets, he actually got knocked out. It's, it's a funny, but it was nice playing against you, and I wish you uh, a lot of luck for the rest of the round, man. Yes, best of luck to you. 
Okay, round number one is done. We got the match lip victory. It's been ages since we've done this. Walk through like the venue with a match lip. It's insane. So uh, yeah, the cool thing about the opponent's deck, Anthony, he was actually playing the uh, Evelta, which actually in game two discarded three fusion energies out of nowhere. But luckily I am playing basic psychic energies as well. And that was uh, my victory ticket to, of course, uh, destroy Ice Rider Arcus V-Star. Uh, Collapse Stadium is something I had to play around because of the fact that he can just discard stuff like his Luminion. Uh, that was actually a boss uh, that I wanted to do on that part, but uh, Collapse Stadium, you know how it goes. But very happy with this first victory. Definitely a good way to start the match. We still need five more victories at least to uh, try and make it to day two as well as a tie. But it's definitely possible and I'm feeling in a very great mood. Let's check out how my friends did. So, round one is done. How did you do? What did you uh, face? I won against Single Strike Box. Uh, basically, uh, a box with Houndoom, Gengar, Emrion. 2-0. Okay. 2 -0. nice. Galarian Zapdos, did you use it a lot? Negative, no. Negative. You just uh, went straight Arceus and then Baby Moltres, I, I assume? Baby Moltres first game. Second game, uh, he started very slow, which made me able to like pick off his uh, building up attackers. Okay, well done. Okay, round one is done. I yes. saw you were uh, playing a Mew VMAX mirror yes. match. How does that feel? It feels kind of great if you know the matchup, but it doesn't feel great if you misplay in the last second to win the game, so I got a tie. Yeah, I saw you was a little <laughs> bit nervous because time was called and there was not yeah, a lot yeah. of time left. And I think that was the crucial turn, right? <laughs> yeah, it was the last turn, so I had everything yeah. I needed because I had three balls in deck. But I needed to play Escape Rope, but I discarded it with Cramomatic. Oh, that's... Just a uh, sequencing error, and in that way I got a tie. So. Well, tie, tie is not uh, the, uh, the worst thing in the world. No, it's, it's better than a loss. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here we are. You did it. There is probably five wheezings in, in this entire, entire venue. World. And you're playing Malamar. And what did you face? A Galarian wheezing. Of On course. 0-2. Zero 0-2, two. Zero two, yeah. There's nothing you can do without no. Chinchino. No uh, artillery, nothing. Other, other, other loss just got locked uh, into a Galarian wheezing. Six cards, he marnied me. Five cards, he marnied me. Yeah. And I'm dead. Back and forth. That's uh, it. Better luck next game. So yeah, no we'll more see. wheezings. So, Jolting VMAX against what did you play? Yes, yeah, so I played against Dronadon and VMAX. The so, uh, pretty much an auto loss for me. And they played Crystal Cave, right? They played Crystal yes. Cave. Did they also play Hyper Potion? Yes, also oh, Hyper yeah. Potion. With Jolteon, that is something they, you never want they, to see. I almost killed them, they healed immediately, and it was over for me. Ah, oh, sad. But well, it's gonna be better next round. Hopefully yeah. no more like those ridiculous matchups. Yeah, yes. indeed. <laughs> Okay, round number two is done. It was against the Mewbies, and uh, I was playing against uh, Sammy Jo. Sammy Jo? Sammy Jo, yes. yes. And she was playing, of course, Mew, of course. Uh, tell me a little bit how uh, the games went. Uh, well, my chromatic look was terrible, um, so that didn't help, but uh, yeah, basically, uh, Joshua just murdered me, so that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, murder was strong. <laughs> Yeah, the mirror was actually pretty interesting, but you always decided to go second. Is there any specific reason? I think in the mirror, uh, going first has some advantages if you can get like two one prizers down. Uh, I like I like going second because if you get the Battle of the IP pass, the Alyssa Sparkle, uh, a Mellow and a Fusion Strike energy, basically you yeah. can Mellow a lot of things down with 210 HP turn. Yeah. Basically on your first turn, I like being able to do that. It yeah. did not happen in these games, but... And, uh, I also got, like, in game one, the, the surprisingly boss, my deck was still pretty thick, but the Luminion play. What do you think about random Luminion? I was not expecting random Luminion. I've seen various versions of this, but um, I've never seen the Luminion. It definitely helped you there. Some yeah. people use Peony instead. I've got one copy of that in there, but... Wow, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> best of luck for the rest of the rounds. You Thank too. You. All right, another victory done. It was Mew v Max Mirror. I have not practiced Mew v Max too often because I just randomly selected Mew v Max like two days before the event and I still was in the in debate, but uh, I actually were, uh, was able to win both times. And the first one, I went first, got energy off on Mew and she was not able to get Alessa off. So that was uh, pretty much victory. And in game uh, two, we actually were able to secure, uh, she actually went second, which was very interesting because she didn't find like Battle VIP pass and everything. So she was slowed down a little bit and that meant we were able to, of course, secure that victory as well. So winning against the Mew VMAX mirror is nice because I hope I will be able to face off other decks as well. All right, we are here finally after two years. Alessandro Kimascoli, how are you doing? Finally. I, I finally, get the beat. after two years, finally. We I are miss, back. I miss, I miss you, I miss all of this, I miss all of, so much. Yeah, and uh, are you playing a, a stall deck? No, I'm playing you. I, no, you <laughs> fell in the trap. Uh, same, I, same, same. I, I, I hate this deck. It's yeah. so fucking boring. But because Malawetta's too strong. 
Yeah, not in my hands. Yeah. Yeah, I missed two times the KO on no and what's your standing? One one. I one, just one. lose against the control deck. Uh really? <laughs> yeah, I'm so mad. Uh this is just like karma. Yeah, I was expecting yeah. you made something you need, but the the in this format is difficult to come up with control, right? Yeah, the problem is uh like I'm not standard so I'm obviously the, the second best uh, control player in Europe. Uh, don't, don't say that to him. <laughs> but uh, I play a lot of deck, uh, all of that was just uh, so inconsistent compared to you. Yeah. That's the problem. I mean, you play Mew, whoa, you play Bullshit. everything else. Nah. Uh, so, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you how the format goes. Attach, pass. Oh, Maloveto, boom! Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah. not if you play against uh, Iveltal, Path to the Peak, uh, Sydney. Ooh. Yeah, that's... Uh, that's nasty. Uh, Meloetta, look out, Iveltal, Sydney, Path to the Peak. Wow. And it's just, of all the people, you come out control. You, you are up against control. Yeah. Crazy. I wish you the best of luck, Alessandro. I will see you around. Yo. Round number three is done. I was up against Nathan, and uh, he was playing UV Max. Can you tell me a little bit how both ways, uh, games went? I went first and both of them, but you actually cut the upper hand bit, of course. Yeah. Double Galoetto every time. So let me Yeah. So, uh, obviously, I went second both games, and my game plan going into it was just get the Meloetta turn one attack off. Doesn't matter what I attack, doesn't matter how many prizes I take, just get the attack off, go up in the prize trade. Um, and as a matter of fact, I actually play three copies of Meloetta in my deck oh, wow. so that I can get that even, like, even more often. Mm -hmm. So I think the Mew Mirror is favoured as long as you can take the first prize card and force them to go through your Meloettas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can sort of lead with two Meloettas and then they have to take one prize, then another one prize, and yeah. then at that point it just becomes too tedious for them to deal with. Yeah, exactly. Well, you played really well in both games, and I wish you the best of luck for uh, the rest of the round. You too. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we are uh, between round three and four. There's a lunch break, and this view is pretty amazing, by the way. Uh, we're gonna grab something to eat. Maybe I can uh, replenish my energy after some chromatic losses. <laughs> yeah, chromatic can actually win yourself a lot of games. I was hoping that the opponent did not have everything, but in mirror matches, when they have everything, they, they just have everything. And uh, we're gonna see, hopefully no more mirrors because I won a mirror, I lost a mirror. So I have seen a lot of movie max. So maybe you can get some, me something else. Maybe sweet on Lady Colo or whatever. Something that uh, is not a mirror because mirror is a little bit uh, luck based. It depends on the uh, coin flips. Currently, two wins, one loss at the Liverpool Regionals. We are at lunch break and we will commence very shortly with round number four. Round number four is done. I was up against Luke Kirtman. Uh, you might know him because he has been in, in the scene for uh, well over 10 years. Uh, can you tell me a little bit how the games went? You were playing Arcus V-Star with Flygon and Beedrill. That's correct, yes. Um, game one was probably the weirdest game I've ever played. Um, we both drew past for about seven or eight turns before yeah, it was, it was I finally awesome. got set up. Um, and then you excuse because you still couldn't do much. <laughs> um, so it's a very bizarre game. Uh, game two, you went first, you got the boss knockout, too, too much momentum, um, and then I scooped quite quickly. Uh, game three was very, very close. Um, I actually ended up misplaying over benching at the end. Um, instead of putting Arceus down, I went for second B drill. And because of double turbo, you can control the energy attachment, so it, it, it puts us in a weird spot. So. Yeah, yeah it was also thing. a strange scenario because I was calculating you had two Beedrill and the Beedrill with his second attack slaps 110. Yeah. But with Oracorio, uh, I think my uh, Genesec had 60 damage. Yeah. And with Choice Bell, you could have hit to like max 140, but with the reduction of resistance minus 30 and or the uh, Oracorio was actually not able, you're not able to KO it, which was pretty interesting. So yeah. uh, I enjoyed the game quite a lot and uh, I learned a lot from it. So I wish you uh, a lot of fun for the rest of the rounds. Cheers, man. Okay, it seems that Beedrill can sting, but we uh, overcome that threat. We actually did some pretty uh, unique things. Uh, at one point, he had like two Beedrills in play, and I was just outsmarting the opponent because the only things that were on his bench was the Mew from Celebrations, Luminion, Luminion, and uh, of course the uh, Crobat, as well as two Beedrills. And so I was like, huh, how do I outplay this? And I actually waited and utilized double turbo energy on Psychic Leaves. It was pretty weird, but it worked out because these Mews from Celebration have have a low amount of hit points and that actually won me the game so pretty interesting so we're three wins and one loss everything is still possible so three more wins let's see okay round number five was done i was up against uh colin griffith uh, he was from manchester if i'm not yeah. mistaken yeah so let me a little bit how both matches go we were uh, playing a mirror match yeah so uh, you know what i can't even remember game one but game two so it came pretty close 
you just drew the nuts and then you dropped your just random Dominion V to be able to get the boss and then you had the last power, ta yeah. power tablet after the free you got Yeah, I, I drew so well with yeah. uh, the Genesect and I keep using Ultra Ball and kept the, the power tablet so I was hoarding them for two or just an, attack a movie max out of nowhere mm. and I knew as long as Luminion was in the deck I could have just grabbed the boss for the last yeah. uh, KO. But, yeah, that Luminion ball was a big shock. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, uh, uh, thanks uh, for the match by the yeah, way. No and uh, the, the best of luck for the rest of the round. Yeah, Okay, we secured another match lift victory. It was super hard. It was a Mew VMAX mirror match, but uh, in the end, and definitely in game two, my Luminion actually did it again. Uh, got the boss's orders that I needed for game. There's only one left in deck, so it was nice to just fetch that out. I I'm using Luminion more for boss than I am using it for Alessa. And in testing, I, I am using it for Alessa. So yeah, I'm learning through the, through the process. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we'll see what happens in uh, round number six. Okay, uh, round six was done. I was up against Nathan in a very close series of mirror matches. Tell me a little bit how both games went. Uh, oh, well, they were both games were very close. Uh, I can barely remember how they, how they went. Now uh, I think the, but, the first yeah. game was well, that uh, situation that you had to uh, slap down both e maxes, so you're not able in, uh, to psychic leap mm -hmm. because you were looking for bosses' orders. Uh, you definitely won that game, but uh, I was very close to whiffing out one tablet for a game in that one, and uh, you won the first one. The second one was a little bit closer with some crazy funky plays happening. Yeah, uh, it was very awkward. I had to. I had a kind of an awkward start and I discarded a boss's orders and that was really. That really hurt, hurt my game then because I only had two. Yeah, I had to game back boats. everything because I only had two power tablets left and uh, that was the only thing I could have done to uh, use the psychic leap with double turbo on Mew to slap exactly 90 damage because he had Oracorio. That was super well played. Luckily my tablet was not prized and I uh, was too able to squeeze out a, a game but it was unfortunately a tie we had not enough time. I think that happens with uh, close Mew, Mew matches. You played very well by the way. Okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Good, Good luck. Okay, round number seven was done. I was up against uh, Jake Pearson and he was playing Jolteon V Max, the first subble I've seen all day. <laughs> Tell me a little bit how both games proceeded. Well, the first game it didn't go particularly well. Uh, Meloetta just absolutely destroyed me. You didn't even get a chance to even play your Mew against that. I uh, bricked pretty heavily. And in game two, I managed to make a pass stick for one turn. Um, but yeah, with the stadium count that you're playing, it's, uh, it just pushed it out and I just couldn't couldn't overcome the breaking. Yeah, the pump curve is something that you don't see a lot in uh, Mew Max list. What do you personally think about it? Um, yeah, the Punkaboo net is a, is a good inclusion. Um, it doesn't really help my prize race, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's just something really good in there, and it just it just took out my path, and it just it's, that was the end of the game for me. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, Punkaboo won it for you. Punkaboo, okay. <laughs> uh, I wish you a lot of fun for the rest of the rounds. Uh, I think you could, yeah, you can still make it, so I win all of them. Let Jolton be in day two. Yes, I can still make day two. Yes. Got, got to win them. Good luck. <laughs> Cheers, thank you. Uh, round number eight is done. It was a win and end for me. Uh, unfortunately, I lost. I was up against Leonard Timmers, a very enjoyable game. He's from the Netherlands, so he could just speak Dutch, which was refreshing, I would say. <laughs> uh, tell me a little bit how the games went. Uh, I think it was a win-loss or loss-win, loss-win-win? No. I think I won the first one, you won the second one, and I won the third. Yeah. Okay. And you opted to go second two times. Yeah. I won the first one because you didn't you weren't able basically to KO one of my guys yeah I with the energy there Draw yeah. a lot of cards in the deck though yeah you uh, drew half your deck but you with the energy somehow and then the second game uh, you won you steamrolled me <laughs> I had nothing to say and the final game uh, yeah again you I went second this time yeah it seems like second wins never wins the games right yeah and then you boss me, my Mew, you tried to KO it, but you whiffed. Again, I whiffed the, the, the puzzle piece to KO it, so unfortunately, but you, yeah. you played very well, I enjoyed the games, and I wish you a lot of luck for the rest of the rounds. Thanks, man, yeah. you too. Okay, so it is winning in time, and uh, I have no idea if I'm gonna be making day two. It's gonna be a learnful experience for sure, because uh, I really, Really, I'm a little bit tired, and uh, it's been two years since we've been playing such a big regionals. But having the win in is already a great step. 
we'll see what happens. Okay, last round was done. It was a win and end. Unfortunately, I lost. And it was a Mew Mirror, the seventh one today or something. It's, it's insane. Uh, yeah, I was up against David from the Netherlands. We could speak Dutch, which was awesome. And uh, tell me a little bit how the game proceeded. You're playing Tower of Darkness and Mew VMAX. Mew VMAX, Tower of Darkness, and four bosses. Oh, four bosses. Four oh, bosses. That was what it was. So I thought you ha always have the boss. I was like, yeah, huh. you always need it, so you always draw it when you play four, right? Yeah, definitely. But I, you always opted to go first, and now I understand because you have the four bosses, yeah. and uh, you can never whiff the boss. Definitely with Tower of Darkness drawing cards. Very well done, and I wish you a lot of uh, luck for the day two event. So uh, Thank you. hopefully you'll be uh, making it to top eight. I'm rooting for you. Hey. Thank you. Yes, there we go. We didn't make it to day two. Uh, we're walking uh, out the venue right now. Uh, none of us actually got into day two, which was uh, very unlucky, I would say. I, I was saying <laughs> I was playing against like seven Mews or, or was it six Mews? I, I don't even remember. I just I didn't see a Mew. <laughs> you didn't see Mew at all. Well, no, that's crazy. I, I think there's going to be a lot of Mew in day two. And I wonder who's going to win the event. Mali also, I think Omnipoke, uh, Joe Bernard actually is doing very well with the Malamar and Talion list, I would yeah. say. I, I'm, yeah. I, I think it's going to be uh, very interesting to see what's going to be winning Liverpool. That's it for this video though. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this vlog. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to let me know by rocking the hell out of the like button. Helps out in ridiculous ways. You have no ideas. There was a lot of people that said hi and uh, had a lot of fun uh, meeting all of you guys. And I, bye. I will um, see you guys in uh, another video. I would say uh, Monday because I'm still uh, in Liverpool on, yeah, tomorrow. So uh, yeah, there's not gonna be a daily upload, but hopefully this huge vlog will help you, of course, to just uh, see what tournaments are all about. It's gonna be awesome to, of course, see you guys in uh, Frankfurt. If I'm able to, of course, uh, manage to score a ticket, it's gonna be difficult. But yeah, anyhow, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you guys sooner than later.